We're back. We're back. My name is Kelly. For those that are new and for those that are not, it's been like two months since I dropped the video. Please forgive me for my absence. I've been doing mixing tutorials and microphone reviews and content surrounding music for the last few years, making videos like this, but I haven't released music in a long time. And I don't wanna get lost in that world of making videos and just stop making music. So I'm trying to bring this thing full circle and start dropping music again. And don't get me wrong, I definitely could just drop like a freestyle tomorrow or something, but I'm very particular with my music. I'm a super perfectionist. I'll be rewriting songs. I'll be changing the beats. I'll be re-recording things. And I just wanna make music that I'm proud of. I can look back in like 30 years and be like oh that was dope and i also want to be consistent with it i want to drop music on like a weekly basis every other week type thing i don't want to just drop a song and be gone for a few months so i'm not just making one or two songs i have dozens of dozens of songs on my computer so that's really been my main focus right now i haven't really been too active on here but today we have a video for you and it's it's called why music sucks right now you always hear everybody talking about like oh music's just not the same anymore music's not like it was back in the in the 70s and the 60s. Well, today we're gonna figure out why music sucks in 2024, why it's not the same as it used to be. A few days ago, I was looking for a plugin online and I came across this article called Why Music Sucks So Hard by Benjamin Groff. And I skimmed through it, but I didn't read the whole thing. I figured this would make a great YouTube video. So here we are today, finally after two months, and we're gonna go over this article and see why music's just not the same anymore. 10 reasons why music sucks so hard right now. Shout out to Benjamin, let's go. So the first point we have here is technology is in the hands of everybody. And pretty much anybody can record music nowadays from the comfort of their home. A $500,000 studio can exist on your laptop for about $500. But back in the day, you would need a record label to fund you to get into a studio, which means you would have to get noticed by a record label, which means you'd have to be good at making music to get noticed by a record label. So it kind of filters out anyone that wasn't really that great at making music. For $500, you can get a home studio that's 1,000 times more cost effective and more powerful than a recording studio 30 years ago, which is crazy to think about. And today you just need a Chromebook, Fruity Loops, a splice pack, interface, and a mic, and you're in the business. Make a beat and a really dope song, upload it to SoundCloud and the DSPs and take your shot. And I'm not sure when this article was written, but I've touched on this before. Back in the day, in like year 2000, there was about 75,000 new music releases per year. And fast forward to today, there's over 200,000 new music releases per week. And I'm not sure when this was written, but I'm pretty sure it's about 100,000 per day as of now. There's about 120,000 new tracks released every day on music streaming platforms. And as he says, back in the 60s, you had to be a serious musician, spending probably 10 years practicing your off just to get in the zone of being good, just to be taken seriously and just to be able to have an entry point into the room. Point number, Two, zero label development for new artists. In the golden era of music 30 to 60 years ago, labels would actually develop recording artists. Labels were in it for the long haul and knew that it might take up the four album cycles, four touring cycles, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and a team of people to see if they actually have the next icon. That's what happened to Bruce Springsteen, four albums even before he had his number one hit and breakthrough. In 2020, labels aren't really doing that. Labels are mostly just signing artists off of how much buzz they already have. Labels today essentially follow data research reports. So it doesn't matter how good or bad your song is, as long as you have a little bit of buzz, labels are gonna try to offer you a deal and throw some gasoline on the spark that your song created. Number three, no 10,000 hours invested from new artists. This kind of goes back to number one, where you'd have to practice for at least 10 years to even get good enough to be able to get into a studio. In 76, someone like Prince had to seriously shed, practice, and refine their craft and put in their obsession, get those 10,000 hours to even step foot into a recording studio. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of the 10,000 hour rule. Once you put in that 10,000 hours, you're considered an expert in the craft or the field that you're pursuing. You see, in the golden era of music we've been talking about, you had to be a serious musician. It didn't matter what kind of genre of music that you made. You had to play your instrument or sing with a level of skill way beyond just very good. In other words, are you willing to practice four to five hours a day for five years straight just and only just to hold your own and be at the starting point to have an entry ticket to be in the room? Number four, today's new music role models pretty much suck. If you were a young artist 40 to 50 years ago, you would be compelled and inspired to write a song as good as the Beatles, Bob Dylan, James Brown, all these other great artists right here. That's where the bar was if you were to be taken seriously. 
Today, if you want to be the next big singer-songwriter, as an example, you might be looking or listening to, I don't know, the latest transient artist showing up on a new music playlist. And then Benjamin goes on to say these artists are just watered-down versions of the greats. Side note, now sure, in rap, I think it's another game. Interesting. Interesting point. I think you have people breaking new territory all the time and holding the bar incredibly high. <laughs> artists like Kendrick Lamar, Anderson Pack, Drake, and many more artists on the way are setting new trends for new generations, in my opinion. Now, this is something I'd, I'd probably disagree with. I feel like rap is very copy and paste. There's so many rap artists making the same song with this auto tune and I gotta get it. I get to the money. I never gonna stop it. So many rap artists are using the same flow. We have all this shit that you're doing. We already have it. Lil Uzi Vert is already doing it. Lil Baby is already doing it. The Baby is already doing it. It's literally two with Baby in their names that's already doing all the music you want. Do something else. We have it already. You don't have to do that music anymore. We have the music already. We have Lil Baby. We have Da Baby. We have Lil Uzi Vert. We have Lil Yachty. We have Lil Everybody. Do something else. Holy now, the artists that he pointed out Kendrick Lamar, Anderson Pack, Drake, these are a select few that are really good at what they're doing. We only really have a few artists in hip hop that are actually rapping and are actually saying something. Rap has turned into like pop music nowadays. I don't think that we have lots of people breaking new territory all the time and holding the bar incredibly high. But anyways, he goes on to say, as far as everyone else, it's just a watering down process. Like, no, that that's hip hop too. <laughs> that, that, that's also hip hop too. Summary, every generation musically waters down and degrades the previous generation music. Very true. I also feel like patterns, like patterns, there's only so many patterns you can make and you're gonna end up making, eventually not even meaning to, you're gonna end up making something that sounds like something that came out earlier because there's only so many patterns that you can make and music's all patterns, so. Number five, the major labels are in a feeding frenzy to sign the latest data research stars. This is again, kind of sad, but 100% true. People aren't really signed anymore off their musical abilities. Well, yes, kind of, sort of. There's YouTubers out there that have a deal because they have a big YouTube channel and they made a couple songs. And since they have a following on YouTube, a record label signs them. But the only reason they really get a lot of views on their music is because they already have like a YouTube channel and a bunch of subscribers on their YouTube channel. So it's not from their musical abilities. It's more from their following and the views and the likes that they get. These labels must sign and chase these viral stars popping off on TikTok, Instagram, or whatever. Virality and data first, music, songwriting, credibility, and long haul careers second. People are just getting signed off of views, virality, and how popular you are. Why spend two, three, or five years developing an artist that you don't even know would take off when voila, this artist over here is already taken off and the audience has spoken, not just taken off, but going viral. So whichever artist is taken off right now, the labels need to sign immediately and grab the next 14 to 15 minutes of fame, which is quickly evaporating. The audience has spoken and I get it. Number six, today's artists have no accountability and no coaches. In the golden era as an artist, you'd have to report to someone, someone who could say yes or no. I still feel like labels have somewhat control. They decide on what they want to release. I know there's artists out there that have some leaked songs that haven't came out and they're and they're really good songs. So I feel like this is still somewhat a thing. Now I'm all for artistic freedom and in me saying this, it sounds anti-artist, but it's just the opposite. Back then, you had someone holding the bar of expertise for you. The label wouldn't release the funds for your studio recording if your songs weren't up to snuff. If you were a songwriter, the publisher would not green light demo fees to get your songs demoed. In other words, you had accountability. You had someone there as a coach saying, this isn't good enough, this could be better. But Benjamin goes on to talk about how we don't really have anyone double checking our work nowadays and artists can just do whatever they want and put out whatever they want, which I still think it's a thing. I still think labels are doing that because I've heard lots of unreleased songs by artists that just never came out. And I assume it's because of what the label decided. So maybe they're not doing it as much, but I still believe it's a thing. Number seven, teams of excellence and quality control are gone. In the golden era, you had a team of excellence based around a music project. Do you think Michael Jackson himself sat down and solely wrote all the songs 100% and A&R'd them objectively, rewrote and rewrote 
and created the productions, string arrangements, played all the instruments, did all the programming, conducted the sessions, mixed and mastered his song. Definitely not, but I still, again, I still feel like there's there's still teams out there. There's a lot of people doing things themselves. There's people like Russ doing everything himself, but I also still feel like quality control and teams of excellence aren't completely gone. Let's go on and see what he says here. Yet in 2020, it's often just one person attempting to do all this in a home studio. Now, that's what I'd be doing. I'd just be doing everything myself, but now that this is definitely true. There's lots of people doing everything themselves in 2020 for sure, but I still feel like there's, there's, there's lots of teams out there and there's lots of people working on music together. But which artist today is making an album that is a must hear record that you need to hear and will be a part of your life for the next five years from now, much less 25 to 50 years? Almost no one. Wait, let me correct myself. Literally no one. <laughs> ben Benjamin's not having it. The reason this isn't happening, in my opinion, is because it's expensive. People think they can do it all on their own and legitimately, actually, they can because everyone else is doing it. However, what happens is the bar just gets lower and lower. The idea, concept, and mindset of song crafting and rewriting and perfecting songs is gone. There's a general mentality of making and even finishing a song in a full production in a day or two. Everybody thinks that the faster you come up with something, the better you seem. You don't. It's not a race on who comes up with the hook the fastest. It's not a race on who comes up with this beat the fastest. The faster you come up with something, the more I know you don't give a f about how it sounds. The greatest records of all time are made with collective genius. So Benji also says this is simply not really happening today except for bigger upper tier superstar artists. And it's just another reason why today's music sucks so hard. No diddy. So there's still people doing things with teams. There's, there's not as many. There's lots of independent artists trying to do everything themselves, which doesn't make for the best music. Number eight, music creation is now in the hands of the uninspired and or doing it for the likes. Now this is a big thing. I feel like a lot of people are just doing music for the likes and the views. Not many people actually care about the craft. They just wanna get a song out there to get some attention and get some cool points. There's not too many people that actually take their time and care about the music and put blood, sweat, and tears into the music. This touches on one of our previous points, but in the golden era of music creation, music was a religion. You were drawn to it like a magnet. There was magic, there was mystery, danger, and sexuality to it. If you were a musician, artist, songwriter back then, it's because you were inspired beyond belief and obsessed. And let's be real, a lot of music creators got in it for the attention, for the girls, or for the guys, or both. If you were great and you could make it, you had everything in the world you wanted. Remember, there was no social media. Today, if you want to get famous and make some money from your originality, and let's be honest, get laid, are you going to shed your craft for 10 years perfecting an instrument or a song craft? Nope, people aren't, people aren't gonna do that. Or are you going to just start doing some dumb stuff on Instagram or TikTok or stream and start getting those instant dopamine hits or maybe build a career on how well you can use an app and influence people? This is society nowadays. People just do dumb stuff for attention. People aren't spending 10 years perfecting an instrument or their vocals or getting good at making music. They rather just do something dumb that gets attention, gets some views and influence people takes five years just to get competent at an instrument or you can make a TikTok skit and maybe get internet famous overnight. Number nine, today's artists aren't ready for live shows. In the golden era, before you were really put on the central stage, you paid your dues. You put in your Malcolm Gladwell 10,000 hours required to be an expert. As an artist, you toured for years and already had 1,000 shows under your belt before you had your big break. That's crazy, that's crazy. Nowadays, people are getting their big break and then doing the shows. The Beatles are a perfect example. They got their 10,000 hours in as a local cover house band in Germany. Interesting. Shows six days per week before they even got their big break. That's crazy. In 2020, people are getting their big, yeah, see, here you go. In 2020, people are getting their break and and then getting on the, then getting on the main stage. So back in the day, they had a, people were doing thousands of shows before they even got their break. So people had lots more experience by the time they blew up. Artists grow virally much faster, which is great. But when they get on stage, not only are they half baked, they're one quarter baked. They come out the oven too soon. It's a disappointment. Number 10, today's artists and songwriters don't just know how good music can be, i.e. their level 10 is really a level six. Wow, you just listened to this week's latest best offering of music and you're literally blown away. 
The truth is, I feel sad for you. And I feel sad for most of today's new artists and writers. Yeah, Benjamin isn't having it. Benjamin's not liking today's music at all. He's not having it. When I go on my Spotify release page or whatever, there's so many artists that I have no idea who they are. Back in the day, I'm sure if an artist dropped a song, you knew who they were. This is because so many people are just dropping music and it's so saturated. Better filters, anybody can get into the studio, anybody can make a song. Back in the day, you had to have a certain skill set. Too many artists and songwriters will just never know or seek out our greatness, much less study it. Therefore, will never know how great their art form can be. So Benji's not having it. The fact that a lot of people are ignorant of the past and not really studying the greats. If a new artist level 10 is really a six, maybe the best they'll ever achieve and create is a level five in the grand scheme of things. That is uh, Benji's article on why music sucks so hard right now i will leave a link down below to this article i think it's a great read i just i just try to summarize it the best i could but you should definitely check it out read the full thing if you guys get some time but music is just not the same as it used to be there's not as much passion creativity technology has really taken over the ai stuff is even getting crazier which is kind of scary it's just not in the same place as it used to be. I'm gonna try to continue dropping videos weekly for you guys for the rest of the year. So hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for new content. Give this video a thumbs up, comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought of the article and how you guys feel about the music industry right now. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Peace.